Good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I hope we're all well today. I uh, got a slightly different video from normal. And this is only on the premise of me watching many, many Rust videos, specifically around the electricity usage. It's never been something I've been particularly good at, nor actually been relatively interested in until now. Uh, at least the very first thing I've ended up looking at is a base alarm system. And I've spent the last week or so kind of building on A, how to do it in the first place, and B, how I can make it better from the original kind of design that I saw. I'll put the link in the description for the original video. And I was having many problems with it. Now the implementation of how I see it being is how you see it on the wall there. And if possible have multiple alarm systems linked to one power source if I can. Um, and the way I'm going to be doing it at the moment is to have two alarm systems, in theory two zones, linked to, at the moment, in this example, there's going to be two solar panels. Uh, you can change and drop it around, probably advisable. Um, you can certainly add in uh, battery packs in some cases, but in that case you might actually need a windmill to try and charge it a little bit better. Um, and there are other ways in which you can use the automatic lights that you can have come on at night. You can build a circuit around that so that it can charge a battery during the day when things like the windmill or the sun, or the solar panel, sorry, are working, and then use the battery at night. Specifically, speaking, a large battery being four hours, literal four hours, is uh, a lot better than a small battery pack, which is only 15 minutes. But for a proof of concept, and just to show you exactly what it is that I'm looking to try to do, um, what I will first do is build the actual system up and then show you working. The idea being that there's going to be two sets of uh, alarm system one on each wall and there's going to be a sensor on the back wall separated by this and the alarm will raise when the in this case heartbeat sensor goes off and it will flash and, and light up in theory you wouldn't have it in this manner where you'd have it on two separate walls that are next to each other you would have it spaced out so if you see the three stone walls on the side remove the middle one you could even have it four so like there's four stone walls one on the far end and then one on this end to kind of get a large zonal part you're not using too much in terms of power and you've still got a decent way of having notification that someone has set up a sensor on the other side of the wall where you may not be able to see it this all depends on your actual base design and um, just for clarification if you do hear gunfire it's because this guy over here is shooting him some twig out he's been doing it on a regular basis hence the reason why the tourists there to stop him doing that but anyways i digress let's get on with it so the first thing i'm going to do is pop down two solar panels for this specific example and again proof of concept there isn't a requirement for it to be any like, major windmill kind of mega power. Uh, on the other side of that wall, there is actually the completed circuit. Um, so I'm going to build up and show you how it works. The first thing I'm going to put down, though, is a root combiner. The reason being is that I have two power sources. I want to go into one, and I'll only be using electrical branches in order to go off to both circuits. Only a single one. Uh, that's all that's required. So the first thing I'm going to do is place this down on the ground. I'm going to get my cable and move that across to my first slot because it's a lot easier. And we're going to have the electrical inputs going in. For a combined power of what will be 40 on the output. Uh, next what I'm going to do is place the first electrical branch which will be the sort of input. So where all the power from here is going into. Um, not I don't need to really make the, uh, the cables nice and smooth but it's nice. Come on, there we go. One of the advantages with the electrical branch is the fact of changing how much power comes out. Because there's 40 going in, it usually uses about one or two. So I might set it to not 38, that's terrible, that's a no, that's dumb. Um I did set the other one to 20, and I think it may have set one to 19 and one to 20, that'll be okay. And um, for the actual circuit, because it's a lot less than uh, what you'll see over there, because I don't have a blocker or a counter in, there isn't actually a requirement which was part of the original plan. So the, there isn't that much power that needs to come off. So the next part I'm going to put in is a couple of splitters uh, because there's going to be power to my heartbeat sensor, power to the timer, and I believe that should be it. And I've just got this in, in question just here. This actually maybe could be made slightly better as well, but for convenience on how I'm progressing through removing certain aspects of the previous one where the counter and the block were in place now they're not I'm just going to use these as they are if you do find an easier way it won't be too difficult for you to put them in the next part I'm going to put in the timers the timer is specifically how long the alarm goes off for and this can be set 
pretty much any duration. It depends on how much you're wanting for. You could either have it set up as a a way of distracting people, alerting maybe someone to the, there's someone outside your base, so you grab the attention of another person. Because I, one of the things I was looking to try and do with this is if you have your base set up, you all going all the way around, and your alarm suddenly goes off because someone's too close. Maybe you don't have tourists on top of the wall. It grabs the attention of other people in the area, and they'll be like, "Oh, I wonder what that is." Uh, specifically, if it's daytime, you'll have a little bit easier. If it's nighttime, you'll just see all these lights going off and be like, "Oh, that's very interesting. I'm going to go and have a look at that." And in theory, you could actually have someone uh, help you with your base defense. So the next thing we'll do is the light siren or the siren lights. And um, this will be on the inside, so everything on here is facing towards your base. Uh, on the outside, the only thing you would have is a heartbeat sensor. Now I'm using walls just as a, a general idea as to how the wiring works itself. What you'll find with the high stone walls which I've done is you can hide the heartbeat sensor inside. So all you see is the black dot on top which is actually red and the slightly white grey part underneath. They can be very difficult to spot if you're not looking carefully and they are very well hidden. So you can see that's what it's like when it's activated. Uh, at the moment it's not properly hooked up because the power's not sorted out with it but that's how it will look. Now if you're just walking along and bear in mind it does work from a really good range. It's not something you'll be looking out for. Uh, so we'll place the hobby sensor on the other side of the wall. This is specifically the only part that will be facing towards what is effectively the enemy. And um, we'll come back on this side. The last parts will be another electrical branch. We'll place that here. And that is effectively what I'm going to be using to build everything up. So it's now time to wire everything, which in itself is very, very easy. Uh, the first one we're going to go on the left hand side is the power in. This is the power into the splitter. Again, this might actually be easy to be made with multiple electrical branches. It just depends on, on how you figure it out. For me, this is perfectly fine. The next one is going to be the power out. So this one's going to go to the actual heartbeat sensor. So we're going to go on the other side, power in. The power out, which is on the right hand side, will go to the right hand side of the uh, timer. So this is toggle on, i.e. it physically switches it. Electrical input, uh, get rid of that. Electrical input will come down here and be another power out. The branch out will go up top. And here, there will actually be an audio alarm, which I've forgotten to add in. Uh, so you'll need a, you need to use a passer in order to use the audio alarm with it. Just place it down at the bottom. And so we'll have the passer going through the actual light siren into the audio alarm. Make sure it is an audio alarm and not the, uh, the sound that you can get through your sound system. Pass through. You can make this look a lot nicer than what it actually is at the moment, and it, it does make a difference if I'm honest. And we'll have the power in. Go towards the timer. And what we'll just do for the time being, because it will actually go off, so I'll remove that for two seconds. And just while I go and plug the other heartbeat sensor in, I don't want to give away just yet. Power in, and then power out. And then we're going to pop the power back in here. Now, the, technically speaking, the electrical branch here doesn't need to change from what it already is, too. I mean, you, you can certainly put it to. I think I had it to 15 on the other one. Um, I don't believe it makes a difference in terms of at least this side of things. It should just work on its default too. And the way in which you just check to make sure it does it anyhow, it just click the activate switch. So that's a, a manual activation. It does go on for 10 seconds. Uh, you can change it so you can set the time to five seconds. At least for testing purposes, five seconds is ideal. Um, should have really done that to start with because it will get really annoying if you're building it and testing it. And we'll do the same with the other one. So we figured that on both of them, the light siren and the audio alarm both work. 
So the next step now, because it's anyone that walks past the sensor should set it off. I should just be able to walk past and this one will go off. Just for clarification on the heartbeat sensor, there are two different options available when you go to set it. By default, anyone that walks past the sensor will set it off, but you can set it whereby it'll have anyone who's authorized on the TC will not set the alarm off, but anyone who isn't will. And you can obviously change and change those settings around. But like I say, by default, it's currently said that anyone walking around will set it off. If you all want to set it up properly, just exclude authorized, and anyone that isn't authorized on your TC will immediately set the alarm off within range. There you go, for five seconds, and then it'll stop. And because it's technically seen me already, I have to walk out of its line of sight and walk back in for it to activate again with the second one. And that one goes off. And then this one will go off again. And that's basically it. It's a self-resetting system. Previously on, don't want it going off just yet, on this one, it includes a blocker and a counter, the idea being that when the counter reaches 1, so the heartbeat sensor on the side will send a signal to the increment counter and set that to 1. Because the target has been set to 1, it then goes through to the toggle and turns it on. And then the blocker will come through and reset it by basically minusing one off. Those two aren't really required in this case. It's The blocker was used as a way of resetting the system, but it automatically resets itself. It's really annoying that that happens every time I press space for I think it's just a server. Um, the server. The system automatically resets, so there isn't a requirement for anyone to do anything. And it's a lot less in terms of cost in, in setting it up. This is only 40 power in total that's coming in from the two solar panels. And obviously if you have a windmill, uh, what we'll do is we'll go up. I think it's like 90 odd for this height. 103. So it, if you, uh, this is one thing I am looking to to potentially try. It's got 103 output. I know I can set up at least two systems. Two on a 20 power is a little bit of a mare. It doesn't seem to like it too much. But if I have 103 with 40, I could potentially set up, maybe with an addition, uh, four alarm systems off one windmill. Of which, because you're using a root combiner as well, uh, as I did try to here, you can in theory extend it out. So I think uh, it's around about here that I had issues in reaching in a single single go with the wire. Having the root combiner at the very least, because of having, if you want to as well in that case, the solar panel set up, gives you a little bit of extra distance. So you can spread them out a lot further. In some way have your windmill a bit further away from the wall, less likely to be attacked or less likely to be chance of attacked. The other thing you can potentially do, which I've looked into but haven't done just yet, is setting up the turrets within a door. So as a theory, you could have on the other side turrets set up here. When the alarm system goes off, and it sets it open. I haven't looked into that just yet, and it looks a little bit more complicated. The only thing I've specifically done, um, which was over here, is just set that up uh, and look at the difference between garage doors and normal opening doors, swing doors. I did find that eh, carriage doors were a little bit better. Just on some random sandbox server. So there's, that's what I made beforehand and the height of it was what you see there for. It only just reached these turrets and that's from as close as it can be to the actual edge. So the windmill is roughly around about here and it went all the way down bearing in mind there's no root combiners either so it was a long distance to reach but they will certainly be a lot better in terms of helping that distance being within reach and at least in that case you can extend it further out have larger zones less equipment less requirement on having 17 windmills on top of your base etc uh, let's wait for it to load in so you could just have one and, and spread it out but that's pretty much what i have here um I did try and set up many, many different ones just to get an idea of how much power it uses. Uh, but this is pretty much what I settled on. And hopefully it gives you some idea of what you can do with a base alarm system or at least like a zonal base alarm system. And you can branch other things off it and see what you think. Um, if you Or if you do know there are easy ways of doing things, do let me know. Because uh, the reduction in the amount of equipment you have makes things a lot better. Makes things a lot easier. Simpler as well. 
if you did like the video don't forget to like comment subscribe there will be a few more out once i get a little bit more used to the way the tricks work maybe come up with the different features uh, not so much the auto light system but maybe how the auto light system at night comes in because the idea being is that you can have a battery backup as well as using a windmill and depending on how the power consumption goes this one you do have to have counters in it can work out whether it should use the battery power or windmill and if it uses windmill the battery power charges if it uses a battery the battery power goes down but it's unlikely to because a lot of times you should should use the windmill and that's just a, a general idea of what i'll be looking to do later on but i will see you all later and i hope you enjoyed the video and you can uh, that might be the thumbnail might screenshot that but yeah hope you enjoyed it thanks very much for your time